Good morning. It is Saturday, so no work today or regular work. So I got my bag, gym stuff, water, time for the gym. Not a super long day today, so I'm gonna try and get, should be able to get this all done in an hour. Um, starting with some, kind of similar to what I've been doing lately is, it's not, a warm up, but it's like a more moderate piece to start with that has some gymnastic skills in there, like a way to build up volume, get uh, my body familiar, comfortable with gymnastics movements again, um, and to get more touches of it without like doing it um, at super high, at a super high intensity. So, but before I do that, I want to get um, everything opened up. So I'm going to roll out my lats, roll out my chest, my pecs. Uh, traps a bit, um, and then we will get going. We are still flossing the knee. On a side note related to my knee, um, it was really cool. I had um, a friend reach out who recently went through an ACL tear, um, and they were they're seven weeks out from surgery and just asking for advice and like, hey, where were you at like physically, mentally around this time? And it was really cool because like I think I told you guys I took I documented especially right after surgery Every day how I was feeling. I mean sometimes how I was feeling not all the time But what I was doing in the gym for recovery all that stuff And I haven't looked at that knee journal in months and so I went back looked at seven weeks post-op and it was just really wild to I don't know, just see how far I've come. Granted, it has been a while, but um, like seven weeks out, I was writing in there like, you know, did uh, front foot elevated split squats for the first time. Um, felt kind of weird, but it was the first time I had done them unassisted. Cause when I started, I started with like holding on to like a bench or something on the side for balance and to take some weight off of my leg. It was just a really cool moment. I'm glad I documented that. It's cool to look back on that. So first up, Turkish get-ups, handstand walking. Turkish get-ups are probably one of my least favorite movements <laughs> um, in training, uh, but I do them because I know they're good for me. They make my shoulders feel nice. Um, and I really like them in, fly, in warm-ups, in prepping for training sessions. They're awesome. And that's why it's good to be on a program and have a coach and stuff because They'll make you do stuff you don't necessarily want to do, but you know you need to do, so let's get to that. Shoulders are very warm. <laughs> and now we've got a superset of uh, deadlifts and strict press. I love doing supersets, and this is actually something I'm gonna be incorporating into the hybrid body program. I feel like especially like with, if you're trying to get in and out of the gym, still get a ton from your workout, doing supersets for your strength stuff is awesome. I definitely enjoy it, just going back and forth. So it's, Two reps, three, three sets of two for both. So get to go a little bit heavier this week. Uh, last week for deads, 
uh, was doing triples at I think 275. So these are a double overhand hook grip again. Um, so gonna try to go at least 10 pounds heavier, see how I feel, um, see how my hamstring feels. It's definitely still a process coming back from uh, the knee surgery because my hamstrings where I got the graft for my knee from. So I feel like we're still working on building up overall strength. I feel like a lot of it is just recruiting those muscles again. Like uh, in the past few weeks, sometimes when I deadlift, I almost feel like my hamstring just really isn't there until I'm like halfway up through the rep of the deadlift. So just trying to make sure um, I'm staying at a weight where I can really engage my hamstrings because I definitely can compensate and kind of like let my left do a little bit of the work, but that's definitely not the goal. We don't want to lead to like other tweaks or injuries and stuff. So um, gotta check the ego sometimes and just stick with weight that um, is still challenging, but that I'm doing it correctly and it feels good and no pain and all that stuff. So yeah. Okay, so not gonna lie, kinda had some numbers in my head. Not gonna <laughs> quite get there today, that's okay. Uh, sticking to 105 on the strict press um, and 280 on the deadlift. Um, honestly, thought I was gonna be closer to like 285, 290, but that's okay. Um, my knee feels good, so that's a win. Um, and I feel like I'm really trying to focus on using, actually using my hips and my legs versus just my back. Um, and uh, like versus trying to do less of a stiff leg, stiff leg deadlift, which I have a tendency to do. So yeah, just two more sets back and forth. just realized that I was indeed lifting with a men's bar for my strict press because I'm using a women's bar for my deadlifts and so that means I was strict pressing 115 not 105 so that's good <laughs> last piece 10 rounds for time um, seven cal ski five strict handstand push-ups three um, sandbag over the shoulders with that thing it weighs 100 pounds so I'll do a round, rest 30 seconds, and do that 10 times. I really like these right now. They remind me of EMOMs, and you guys know I love EMOMs. Um, I like the prescribed rest in these, keeps the intensity high, I feel, versus doing 10 rounds straight for time, which time and a place for that as well. But I feel like this keeps me accountable as far as, okay, I know I'm gonna get 30 seconds of rest, so like there's no need for me to like mosey my way on over to the sandbag. Like I need to just go right up to it, pick it up, cause I know I'm gonna get rest. So, um, and my goal on this is to do the five strict handstand pushups unbroken for all 10 rounds. That's the plan. Um, if it does get to a point where I'm like resting for 10 seconds on like my third, fourth rep, probably break it up into like three, two, but that's the plan for now. To keep track, I also wrote stretches on there so I remember to do my stretches afterwards. I really like doing tally marks, so we'll do 10 tally marks so I don't lose track of my rounds. Let's get to it. All right, all done. Stuck with the five and broken the whole way, which was awesome. I definitely noticed as I was getting tired, or it might have even been right off the bat, uh, definitely was going a little wide on my handstand push-ups. So at a competition, when there is that little box that you guys stay in, I think I might have been a little bit outside the box. So towards the end, like noticed that, and then tried to bring my hands in. Um, so hopefully that was a little better. 
But uh, yeah, that felt good, it was fun. Now I'm gonna do some stretches and I wanted to show you, um, we're just gonna do three different stretches. Because I've been sitting a lot more, I've talked about this before, but um, sitting at my desk a lot, I notice like my hips are just really feeling it. So everything just feels very tight. Um, and instead of feeling, I know sometimes I'll feel like, oh, I need to get my stretching in. So I need to block off like a whole half hour, 45 minutes to do this big stretching routine. But honestly, for me, I've just done like a few minutes each day or every other day and it adds up and it just makes you feel so much better not just walking around in normal life but also in the gym um so i'll usually do this if i don't this do this after my workout i'll literally just do it at the end of the day or like during lunch time and i'll just go through each of these and hold the position for around 45 seconds to a minute so it doesn't take much out of your day like five ten minutes so first one i'm going to do is couch stretch like at home, I literally do this up against my couch. Just stay here. If this feels a little too intense, you can bring your knee further away from the bench or couch. Nice and tall. And to get a little bit more of a stretch, you can squeeze this glute. And so you'll feel it like, you should feel it all through the front of your hip. I feel it a lot in my quads. So I definitely need this. And I'll just hold this for a minute. Also need something for your knee. So, similar position. We'll start in a lunge. So, starting in a lunge, um, and again, you can still get a really good hip stretch with this. And same thing, you can squeeze this glute, and then just staying up nice and tall. You don't need to like lean into it a ton. And then after you a few seconds here, you can either drop to your hands or to your elbows and I'll just chill here for a minute and it feels really good. I'll feel it in my right hip but I also feel it in my left hamstring and my left hip a little bit which feels good. I'll hold this for a few seconds and then drop it down. Okay so the last one is similar to like pigeon pose that you can do on the ground. That one is very tough for me right now, and I feel like because my hips are so tight, it puts a lot of stress on my knee. So this is almost like a modified pigeon stretch, which I really like. So you'll need like a tall box or even like a tall chair, but something also like that you can, uh, that's soft for your ankle. So we'll go one leg at a time. You're essentially doing like figure four. And again, if you want, you can put like something here. If this is like a really intense stretch, you can put like a yoga block or like a pillow or blanket on here so it's not super intense. And then I'll just sit here for a minute as well. And then if you want more of a stretch, you can like lean into it a bit. And I feel this one a lot on the outside of my hip, not like in the front, and you shouldn't feel it in your knee. And if you're like me, You'll notice that one side is a lot easier. This side is much tougher, which makes sense. This was the side I had surgery on, so everything's a little, little tighter. But I find that like just kind of sitting here, eventually like my hip starts to relax and release a bit. All right, that is it. All right, stretching all done. I hope those help you guys, those help me a ton. I feel like I just am like standing taller now after that, as funny as it sounds. Fitness all done, now I gotta run some errands. Might stop into the Alice store, new Alice store in Scottsdale. It is massive and beautiful. Um, and I love their stuff. But I'm still just not a fan of their leggings, which is so sad, I want to be. But like, the Lululemon Align pants are still the way to go, and there's just, in my opinion, nothing better. Hello, so we're back home. I washed my hair, showered, feel much better. I had breakfast. I was so hungry. Um, and now I'm having lunch. <laughs> so here's what I'm having. Uh, I already cut it up, so it looks a little weird, but that's just some grilled chicken with some uh, spicy mustard and a little bit of spicy mayo, some Japanese sweet potatoes, ketchup, and then some sauteed kale, and of course some everything big ol' seasoning. I'm gonna eat this and then we've got some work to do, some programming for my hybrid program. 
Um, and I think I'm going to go to Starbucks today. Well, I've said on here, but I just like, I work from home every day and, and it's great because I've got like my big monitor and my setup and my nice chair and all that stuff, but I don't know, sometimes it's just nice to like get out of the hell house. <laughs> um, I just feel like I can focus a little bit better. Also, gonna go to Starbucks because Christmas cuffs are out. I'm not gonna lie, I, so I love my Nespresso and I feel zero need to go to Starbucks anymore or to go out to get coffee, like I'm that obsessed with the coffee. But Christmas cups make me very happy, so I went the other day, not gonna lie, really didn't like, um, cause they have, Starbucks has their Christmas um, drinks. So I tried to get like a variation of one because the normal ones to me are like way, way, way too sweet. And so I got like a sugar cookie something, not gonna lie, it was pretty gross, so, I might give another one another shot. Uh, might look up that macro barista guy, see what um, he has up there. Might do like a peppermint mocha or something, but I'll keep you guys posted. I did get Christmas type one. It's a grande cold brew, one pump peppermint syrup, one pump mocha, and then just a very light splash of heavy cream, which I very much appreciated that they took that to heart, because sometimes the light splash is not so light. Not too sweet, I like that a lot. I also got um, just an Americano. One, because I wasn't sure if this would taste very good. Also, I hope there's nothing in my teeth that it could be. Um, and, Unfortunately, the cold drinks don't come in Christmas cups, so I had to stay festive. All right, a little later in the day, it's now dinner time, and I'm actually getting a little fancy with what I'm making. I mean, it's the same thing for me. It's always, um, I gotta have a protein, a vegetable, some sort of carb. Um, so tonight is salmon, and I'm gonna do rice for my carb, and then zucchini for my vegetables. Um, and so just sauteed some zucchini in a pan. And then I actually have some toppings over here. So I've got some thinly sliced cucumbers, green onions, uh, cashews, and some avocado. And then just some pomegranate seeds for fun. For the salmon, so right now I just have it marinating for like 20, 30 minutes. And I'll show you what um, I put on this. I put some liquid aminos, like instead of soy sauce garlic powder. I was gonna do onion powder, but they didn't have that at uh, Trader Joe's, unfortunately. So, and then some uh, some pepper flakes, and then some of this um, hot honey sauce from Trader Joe's. I saw this recipe on TikTok, so giving it a shot. And I think that was pretty much it. Yeah, so just sliced up the salmon, put that on, marinating for like 20, 30 minutes, and then I'm gonna throw that in the air fryer for around like eight to 10 minutes at like, 390 to 400 degrees, put that over the rice, and the zucchini, and then all the toppings, and I'm really excited to try it. And then, rest of the night, not a whole lot planned. Hopefully going to sleep fairly early. Gonna wrap up some more of uh, the hybrid programming. Um, tonight, work on that a little bit tomorrow as well. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys are having an awesome weekend, week, day, um, and I will see you guys in the next one. All right, I know I said I was leaving, but I wanted to show you. It looks so good, and it smells amazing, and this was so easy. So now I'm gonna put this together. All right, so here's the end product all put together, and then I'm gonna top it with some of this stuff. It's like little bits of seaweed and like sesame seeds and stuff. This is also a presentation. This is very much a weekend thing during the week. I do not take this much time. <laughs> to make my food look nice. Excited about this one. Always, always fun and great to find easy recipes, um, easy healthy recipes. But yeah, gonna have this and then have some of my cookies that I made. And this is a reminder, um, if you do make those cookies, I promise, I mean, either way they'll taste great, but definitely freeze the dough for a bit. Otherwise, they look like this. 
And again, they still taste good, but I promise you they taste better <laughs> if you freeze the dough for a while. Um, otherwise, they just, because the dough is, um, yeah, you just need to freeze it. So um, otherwise, they kind of melt. But still very good, so I'm going to enjoy my salmon bowl, some cookies, and I will see you guys later. Bye.